All right, go ahead and drop that jewel, Sister Sharon. Yes, sir. So when Brother Bartin was reading this, just the emphasis he put on it, on this particular um, ayat, and he said, nay, I swear by the day of resurrection, and he said it with so much feeling, and he said, nay, I swear by the self-accusing spirit, does man think that we shall not gather his bones? Yeah, we are powerful to make complete his, his whole make. Nay, man desires to go on doing evil in front of him. He asks, when is the day of resurrection? So when the, so when the sight is confused and the moon becomes dark and the sun and the moon are brought together, Man will say on that day, whither to flee? No, there is no refuge. With thy Lord on that day is the place of rest. Man will that day be informed of what he sent before and what he put off. Nay, man is evidence against himself. Though he put up excuses, move not thy tongue therewith to make haste with it. Surely on us rests the collecting of it and the reciting of it. So when we recite it, follow its recitation. Again, on us rests the explaining of it. Nay, but you love the present life and neglect the hereafter. Some faces that day will be bright, look into their Lord, and other faces that day will be gloomy knowing that a great disaster will be made to befall them. Nay, when it comes up to the, when, nay, when it comes up to the throat and it is said, who will ascend with it? And he is sure that it is the part, that it is the parting, excuse me. And affliction is combined with affliction. To thy Lord on that day is the driving. Uh -huh. So going back to, Verse nine, it, it says, and the sun and the moon are brought together. And then in the footnote, it says the bringing together of the sun and the moon implies the disappearance of the light of both. I apologize. So that part made me think about Master Fahd Muhammad and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, mm -hmm. the bringing together of both. And then it says it may be a partial disappearance as in the case of an eclipse. And in that case, the reference may be to what is stated in a report relating to the appearance of the Mahdi, in whose time the sun and the moon will both be eclipsed in the month of Ramadan. Then I said, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So I, my brain is just clicking this morning. And then it says the name of the Messiah and Mahdi being associated with the final triumph of Islam in the world. And I'm like, wait a minute. This is talking about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And the minister reminded us of how the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said he will not rest until the day when the world is under one ummah or in full submission to Islam. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, wait a minute. And then it says... We are thus told that Islam will not only triumph in Arabia, but in the whole of the world at a later period in its history. If the total disappearance of the light of both the sun and the moon is meant, the reference would be to the final disruption of the solar system and the ma manifestation of the great resurrection. So, and it made me think about when the minister said to us, you know, when a darkness falls or befalls us, it's going to be a brighter day after the three years of us suffering. And we know that a lot of talks about those who appear as slain or dead or not. We just perceive them not. So the eclipse, thinking about the eclipse during Ramadan, where it seemed like both the sun and the moon are gone. It's not. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is still present. No matter how dark our lives get or situations may get, knowing that 
they've shown us and taught us and made us know, not only believe, but know who they are later on after we go through that darkness or the eclipse in our lives, the sun is still resurrected no matter what. And the moon still gets its reflection from the sun. So we still, we have a, a whole vast of information to get us through the dark hour. Mm -hmm. And we just hold on while the, the, that period passes because it's, it's only for a short period of time. Three years is not a long time. Mm -mm. And with the the sun and the moon being eclipsed we got to be careful when that brightness comes back the sun comes back the light is blinding and it made me think about the honorable minister lewis farrakhan how his light is so bright they had to close up the books mm -hmm. so when he comes back with that with the new book we got to be careful not to get carried away not to get blinded um, by what it is we already know, but be in preparation for that new book. Mm -hmm. So that <laughs> is a whole bunch more in my mind, but that's what I got from, from reading that. Praise be to Allah. Yes, ma'am. That uh, on a personal note, me and a couple of brothers have been in conversation for the past three or four days. You know, I, I call these my high science brothers. Yes, sir. And um, this verse came up uh, in 2021. The brother was sharing with me. They they were actually out in Chicago with the minister. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the brothers had mentioned, I guess the minister asked the question because it was. Um, it was the time was the time during there was another eclipse that took place. Something something happened in 2021 or something. But this I my understanding, this question came up. And one praise of the brothers answered with Surah 75 with that same footnote. Oh, praise be to Allah. And the minister uh, I guess called out and said, Who who's who said that? And the brother stood up thinking that he had, you know, he had made an error. And the brother gave his understanding of that. And from what I was told, the minister pulled him aside and said something to him privately. Oh. So um, there's a lot in this because uh, the the this this occurrence, based on what I saw on the internet, this occurrence only happens once every 375 years. Wow. So so this is very, very significant. Um and you got everyone's coming up with their, you know, little theories and whatnot. But the bottom line is, and I had mentioned this to a brother, and this is based on something from Buddhism that I, I remember a quote. Mm -hmm. And if you pitch, picture in your mind a room of intense darkness, so dark that you can't see your, your hand in front of your face, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's say you're able to strike a match or something and light a candle mm -hmm. no matter how dark that room is that darkness does not have the power to put that candle out right and that's how we have to be now if you go back to those notes that we got from sister tina that were based on the notes that came from brother abdul saeed in one of those notes it says, and I'll, I'll read the note exactly as it was written. Assalamu alaikum and Ramadan Mubarak, Sister Anya. You're on mute. Uh, let's see what. Assalamu alaikum, salam. I just had walked into the other room. Yeah, I'm mute again. Oh, can you hear me? Why does this thing keep muting? Oh, I hear, oh. hear you now. Okay. Uh, yeah, I had just walked into the other room when you called my name. <laughs> <laughs> and Ramadan Mubarak, everyone. Ramadan Kareem. Ramadan Kareem. So, so point number 35, the minister said this. This is based on, have you received these notes, Sister Sharon? No, sir. Okay, we got to make sure you get these notes. 
uh, he said, this is a, a statement that was made by the minister. Who will be my helpers and who will I find upon my return? Then he says, this means you have to keep in contact with me. Now the real work begins. We have been practicing our labor now. The real test and work is in front of us. Mm -hmm. So now let's ask, here's a question that popped in my head a couple of days ago. Our, our lessons say three, was it three and a half years of labor? Yes, sir. But does it ever tell us when the three and a half years begins? Mm -mm. No, there's, a, there's a story in the Bible that talks about a wise man going away on a far journey. And he gives one man three talents. He gives one man two talents. He gives another man one talent. And the one who had three doubled it. No, the one who had five doubled it to 10. The one who had three added on to it to make it five. And the one who had one talent buried it. When the wise man came back, he spoke to the one that he gave five talents to. He saw that he doubled it. And he said, faithful servant, you have been you have been faithful with little, so I'll make you rule over much. Mm. Also, the second individual who just added on. You know, faithful servant, you were faithful with little, I'm going to make you rule over much. But there is one that had one talent who buried it because that one was going to wait until he came back. And he said, if I remember correctly, he said, thou sinful and slothful individual. Mm. And it said that he took the one talent from him, gave it to the one who had doubled it, and then sent him out into utter darkness where there's the wailing and gnashing of teeth. Mm. Now, the way that I the way that I have perceived wailing and gnashing of teeth is you know when you when something happens and you should have done something and you knew better and you didn't do it. You mm -hmm. say, oh man, I know I shouldn't. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Wailing and gnashing mm -hmm. teeth. Mm -hmm. Oh man, why didn't I? Well, by then it's too late. Right. So my thought process is all that we have been doing uh, with regards to how many years, whatever amount, amount of years we've had in the nation has been preparing us for this moment. Right. It's easy to work when the minister's present because, you know, we want to do what we can do in the presence of others. Yes, sir. Knowing that the minister, his presence is a mercy. But can we have that same strength and faith as the minister? Because right. all the minister had in the very beginning was love for the messenger and then he slowly grew into the 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 not the belief, but the knowledge that the most armor lies behind is still physically alive. Right. Can we move forward, even if it appears that the minister has passed away? Right. Because he has said, you know, and I'm I'm paraphrasing it based on what I've heard from different places, that if you if they show you a body, don't believe it. Right. How many of us will be able to continue to work after they portrayed on the news, minister has died and this, that, and the other, because they control the media. You're going to have believers amongst us saying the minister is not dead, but you're going to have believers amongst us who, number one, they don't believe that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is still physically alive. Right. So they're not going to believe that the minister is still physically alive. How many of us continue can continue to do the work with the pressure on us that we have two pressures now. Is the most time lives Muhammad still physically alive? Is the minister still physically alive? Can we continue mm -hmm. to do the work in his absence? Right. And what does he mean by you have to stay in contact with me? Now, some believers have dreams and I've heard brother Jabril make this statement in self first. I can't remember if it was part one, part two, or part three. He said, you don't have, basically, and I'm paraphrasing, you don't have dreams about those three. Those are communications. So 
what type of life do we have to live in order to maintain contact with him in his absence? Because believers have had dreams about the minister and have received information mm -hmm. from him mm -hmm. through the dream. Right. Okay. So. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. And I'm glad you said that, Brother Lukman, concerning the communications with the three. Mm -hmm. Now, once when I came into the nation, I would have this continuous dream or communication with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan over and over and over and over and over. And the closer it got to me meeting him face to face, the communication changed. Communication changed. Why is my car shaking? What makes rain, hail, snow, and earthquake? It's an earthquake. My house is shaking. Whoa, you felt that? I'm feeling it right now. Uh -oh. We're all in New York. I'm in Jersey, in Jer New Jersey. My house is shaking New right Jersey. now. Uh-huh. Look, the guy behind me is like, what's going on? You in you in Jersey too, Brother Luke man? No, I'm in New York. Just when sister said it, my wow. house started shaking and my, my heart sank for a minute. Mine sank too. I'm like, whoa, what's going on? Mine was like bouncing. My, my house is still it's shaking. It's doing a it bit. again. It's doing it again. All right. Okay. Praise be to Allah. She said, Praise be to Allah. Allah my, my, my heart just. Allah Allah Allah. Allah. I was just talking about. Yo, that's crazy. Hey, what what can we hold on to when the earth is shaking? Oh, oh, uh, hold, hold, hold. The firmest handle is hold I'm on. I'm having to hold up. My now my daughter called me. Hold on one second. Um. Yeah, it was an earthquake. Wait yeah, a minute. We, we were sitting here on the on the Zoom meeting and we all felt it. Um, wow. That my daughter's crazy. calling me, so she feeling something. But the other day I had this conversation. I'm driving the bus and I said, if the earth quakes, what can we grab a hold to to secure our foundation? It's nothing unless we're in an airplane. Well, it's nothing we can hold on to. A lot says that will secure our foundation. He is the firmest handle. So the best thing we can do is hold on to the three. Right. <laughs> right. My daughter keep calling me, but let me make this point. Uh -huh. the, the one communication I kept having with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, it changed the closer I got to actually meeting him face to face. And I was pregnant with my middle son, Ibn, the one you met during Savior's Day. Mm -hmm. And, but in this communication, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan would give me this huge hug and it would be this bright light and he would be taken away by two people in some kind of vehicle. My daughter, she texted me as an earthquake. And when I finally met him, I was pregnant with the, the middle one and I was going in any day and the minister was so excited but he told me about him he said he's going to be a great a soldier for Islam and he was like you know or she but I'm like how the minister know I was having a boy but I gave birth to him seven days later on the minister's birthday praise be to Allah mm -hmm. now the communication with the three I'm always having communication with the three this one communication I had last year I was walking on the beach and I could see the, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. They were on a bench, on the beach. I could see the water, the sand. I could see the minister first. And the closer I got, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was in the middle. And when I looked over, Master Farah Muhammad was sitting there. And I was like, oh, my God, I got so excited. I woke up. I'm like, dang, I always do this. Another <laughs> one, all the time. Another communication I had with Master Farah Muhammad. <laughs> Oh, Allah. This was uh, about six months ago. I met his sister and I met his younger brother. And his sister took me on a tour through the house. And on this one big picture was Master Far Muhammad. A front view of him, he had the biggest smile and his hair was all silver. He had the biggest smile. And it was a smaller picture of the three of them. He was in the middle. And his sister and brother was to his side and he had his arms around him. And he was just so bright like the sun. But the home was red, gold, and black. 
And I kept focusing on his sister's shoes, beautiful pair of black patent leather shoes. <laughs> but Master Far Muhammad said to me, don't worry about nothing. Don't worry. And when I turned to look, I woke up. I said, every time I get excited. So I know for me, I know what my focus is. And Mother Tynetta said, and the minister mentioned this during Savior's Day, to be quiet and listen for the instruction of Allah. Ask him to help you. Pray to him. The minister told us to pray to him and go to work. Mother Tynetta said, ask Allah to help you, to teach you, and you will learn. So I'm learning to be quiet, to quiet the chatter up in my mind, whether it's my own stuff or stuff from other people, just to lessen my conversations and really go into focusing on the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan mm -hmm. and what he says. And the more I do that, the more I receive. The more I receive. And I'm the fear that is, and anxiety that I had is escaping me. And I know there's no God but Allah. I don't, I don't believe it. I know it without a shadow of a doubt. Praise be to Allah. Allah Wafa. Assalamu alaikum and Ramadan Mubarak, Sister Tina and Sister Denise. Wa alaikum salam. All praises due to Allah. I am so honored to, I came in late, but I'm honored to be here to witness the earthquake and the calm in the believers. Yes. I said, what? Who, who makes rain, hail, snow, and earthquake? <laughs> <laughs> And, yes. it, and it happened right as Sister Sharon said, the three. Mm -hmm. mm. Sister Sharon might be one of them X-Men. Mm. <laughs> Look, mm -hmm. I'm, in that, I'm in that class right now. <laughs> 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 yeah. Praise be to Allah. Brother Luke, mine. Yes, ma'am, uh, Sister Denise. Uh, you two had a preparing for the departure of the minister. You saw that? Say what? On YouTube how to prepare for the departure of Minister Louis Farrakhan. I saw oh, no, that. I'm not... Oh, you didn't see that? Okay. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It's only two. And it's um, believers that was with the messenger when the messenger left, they're giving interviews mm -hmm. of, of what what happened when the messenger left and, mm -hmm. and how the believers were and brother was, was, was they was encouraging us to not to flip out because we have the material. The minister have been, pre been preparing us for a long time. And and uh, he was saying that, I, I don't know if they had the messenger's books and they didn't think about that. They He said, we was just thinking about the messenger not being with us. You know, it's like your, your, your mother is gone. So a, mm -hmm. a hole is there. But I was saying, Oh my God, we got to study guys. We got defending Farcon. We got the secret relationship. I'm just I'm saying, oh, we got all I said, I said, I need a a studio where you know I can make it my study because this these are things that will keep us grounded. Mm -hmm. Say what what hold on to hold on to what you got. I know that's a song by Sam Cook, you know, hold on to what you got. But hold on to what you have. We sometimes we were waiting for Study Guide nineteen. We we just knew it was gonna be something. Study Guide nineteen, and we already had the who and what is God mm -hmm. at 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 Johnny Coleman's church. And sometimes it, when we look at what we've been given, I mean, he he has given us everything. You emotional, you got to rise above it. All right, study so guy number 18. And, mm -hmm. and closing the gap and and uh, how to eat to live. I mean, we've been given so much. Mm -hmm. And so the sister said in the, I'm not going to talk about everything, but, but she talked about had they had the materials of the messenger, you know, and not just caught up on the personality of mm -hmm. what have been given to them. It's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I went back and listened from the beginning to the end. So 
no no psych wars for the believers. Mm-hmm. You know, the minister been keeping our foot on the ground since day one. Mm-hmm. Even though the earth is shaking. You know, I mean, the study got it, stuff started coming to us, you know, uh, the Holy Quran, hold on to the firmest grip of a lie, hold on to the rope of a lie, <laughs> you know? I mean, things are coming to us. And uh, and when when the minister stood up against the odds, I mean, he was that that determined. I think it's in uh, in uh, clothing the death how uh, how to deal with ad- adversity mm-hmm. when it comes to real hard. So I was like, okay, I need a library here. Let me let me see if I can <laughs> you know get back there and get my library together because. I I need to study, you know, mm-hmm. time to, to look into those the what we've been given, yes, sir. So it's on. I you when you type in, you know, preparing for the departure of the minister, the believers is giving some advice on, you know, and it was like we have to we have to come together as mm-hmm. a family, mm-hmm. you know. Yes, sir. That's yes, ma'am. All. Oh, praise you, Lord. Thank you, Sister Denise. And uh, I some like him in Ramadan Mubarak to the to the world famous brother Wahid, my big brother. <laughs> no, I saw him. Is he on? He's he's on. I saw him briefly. Okay. Um, in response to that, Sister Denise, there's two things I'll share with the believers. Um, one is based on a question that came up a couple of days ago that we discussed. We were discussing part of one of the lessons, civilized means to teach the knowledge and wisdom of the human family of the planet Earth. Yes, sir. But another thing is this. This is something that I, I, I've decided to do uh, with regards to minister. St- I mean, I've been I've been trying to do this for years. I, I started and I, I don't complete the cycle of action. But when the minister makes that statement in the notes that we have saying we have to stay in contact mm-hmm. with him, the thought that I had was, why not go through all the books and produce my own study guides? Okay. So what I did was the book I'm starting with is Closing the Gap. And I've, I have produced for me what I had the study guide number one based on Closing the Gap. So my goal is in the absence of the minister, you know, my personal goal is to produce study guides so I can reinforce my understanding of everything that we have been taught up to this point. Fall of America, our Savior has arrived. Uh, how do you to live book one and book two? Seven speeches. You don't hear anyone talk about seven speeches. Our, our Torchlight for America, Message to the Black Man. I started on Message to the Black Man already, just producing my own study guides and making this knowledge, making this like nat- natural, like second nature. And s- s- we'll go to you, Sister Sharon, and then I'm going to explain why, my my personal reason of why I'm doing it. Go ahead, Sister Sharon. Praise be to Allah. I just want to <laughs> put this out there. Towards Life for America is out of print right now, so if anybody have an extra one, please send it to me. I loan mm. mine out, never got it back. So that book is out of out of print right now. Torchlight for America. Torchlight of America. Torchlight for America. Mm-hmm. Am I saying it right? A, 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 it's a, a torchlight for America. Right. Yes, sir. Uh, a torchlight for America. Yes. 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 Okay. Sister Tina. Um, yes, sir. Um, before you go on, I just wanted to speak on the the, the, the incident that just took place with you and sister um, Sharon Uh uh, with the earthquake. Uh And I just want to read this in the Holy Quran. Um, This is from today's reading, uh, chapter 47, Muhammad. And verse 29, no, verse 35, verse 35. And be not slack so as to cry for peace. And you are the uppermost 
and Allah is with you and he will not bring your deeds to naught. Now, this right here to me fits what just happened. I mean, it's in war. We can be in war, physical war as well, trial. And so you and Sister Sharon were in a situation where uh, folks could have been all discombobulated and just losing their minds. You know, what's going on? What's going on? What's happening? You know, and it says, and be not slack. I got to parse that word slack. And be not slack so as to cry for peace. So I did go into the meaning of peace. And this, uh, to me, fits. It says, one of the meanings, freedom from disquieting or oppressive thoughts or emotions. And an oppressive thought is, oh, what's going on? I'm going to die. I'm going to die. What's this? You know, so <laughs> y'all were at peace and, you know, a law was on your mind and that was it. And if it was going to, if the earth was going to open up up underneath you, you were um, okay with that. If that, that, that was the type of peace I heard in your voice. And um and 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 that's what it says in uh in um 33 it says uh what does it say when it's talking about and I will forgive in 34 it says surely those no 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 okay no I'm not gonna read that one but um because that's those that have the opposite thought you know but you and Sister Sharon had peace and all praise is due to our great example. <laughs> <laughs> all praise is due to Allah. Uh, for Sister Anya, Brother Wahid, and Sister, De Sister Denise, what occurred earlier, about 10 minutes ago, as we were talking, we just experienced an earthquake. Sister Sharon experienced it in New Jersey and I experienced it here in New York. As we were talking, everything started shaking. <laughs> <laughs> that was an interesting experience it was and then I, I think a lot I witnessed mm -hmm. it I think a mm -hmm. lot that I would just came on late and everything uh -huh. and I witnessed it all oh, praise and, and it happened day. right after sister Sharon mentioned the three she mentioned the three and then she started looking around like and I'm looking at her like what in the world and that's the end <laughs> I'm like wait a minute <laughs> wait a minute praise to a lot my I daughter said, said it woke rain, her hail, up. Snow and earthquake. Right. Praise mm. to Allah. Mm. So. My. Luke, my. Yes, ma'am. Um, sister Tina and I had read the, the whole book of Saint John. Mm hmm And there was a period in the book I I was reading it out of the Way Bible. Okay. Mm -hmm. That. Um, the disciples, you know, when when Jesus left them, mm -hmm. they were doing things, and they were, I don't know if it's teleported, but they they they're in one place, but then when you read about them again, it's it's like they're gone, they're in another place, and I'm not sure. Now I I don't think it has I don't I don't know if it's teleported where you can, you know, I know Star Trek, they say, beam me up. Where you, uh -huh. Well, beam me up. I'm ready to go. You know, you could be in one place and then just uh, and then when they looked again, he was gone. I mean, and, and he was in another town or something. City. Mm -hmm. And we were reading as his disciples was doing the work, this is what was happening to them. Mm-hmm. It was like a higher level of consciousness mm -hmm. where where they could be here and be there, <laughs> you know, in the mm -hmm. next second. And I, I, I don't know why I just thought about Star Trek, you, you know, where you just you push a button and you go on somewhere. You, mm -hmm. you know, you're in another. They would do good and then um, and then just leave that spot and end up 
and it didn't say how they was traveling, you know. So that's what. Um, so I'm uh, I'm thinking it's a it's a higher level of consciousness, uh, the out of body experience that you could you could be here and be somewhere else, mm-hmm. and then then come back. What you think about that, brother Luke? Ma? Uh. I'll I'll speak based on my experience. Um, okay. There's there's two things that I've experienced over the course, and, and, and it, I remember it started October 2012. There's something about October 2012 that was just life changing for me. You have what's called lucid dreams, and you have what's called out of body experiences. Um, a lucid dream. And this is based on scientific research. And I'll, I'll, I'll preface it with this. There are five stages of consciousness based on this world science, based on brain frequency. Okay. So right now, as we're having this discussion, this is considered beta frequency. Okay. Beta is when you're conscious, you're alert. As you start to get a little tired, your brain frequency will slow down to what's called an alpha state or alpha frequency, okay? And then you can get into a deeper meditative state, which is called theta, okay? And the reason why I remember that order is because it spells the word bat, B-A-T, beta, alpha, and then theta. Now, the stage of sleep is found in what's called delta, okay? So D, I say D represents dead, okay? D is sleep, D is dead. So so below theta is delta, that's when you're asleep. But now there's a higher frequency above beta, which is called gamma. And I say G represents God. So that's how I remember gamma, beta, alpha, theta, and then delta. Interesting thought is, the frequency of thought at gamma starts at 40 beats. I think it's 40 beats per second. 40, and number 40 comes up, okay? Now, with lucid dreams, they have done studies and shown that when people are in a state, they're in a dream state, that their brain frequency is gonna register at the state of delta. Does that make sense? That that shows that, that a person's asleep. But what they have shown is that even at a state where the body is asleep, they have registered individuals that were showing uh, alpha, no, not alpha, but beta and gamma level frequencies, meaning that their body was asleep, but they were still conscious and alert. Now, one of the studies that has been conducted, and you can Google this doctor's name, He's like one of the ones that were the full, he was like one of the foremost in the study of lucid dreaming. His name is Dr. LaBerge, Le, L-A, I think it's L-A-B-E-R-G-E. And what he would do is when he was doing these studies, he would let the people know that I'm going to signal you to let you know that I'm aware and conscious when I'm in a dream state. And he would, he said, I'm going to, because they can, they can, they can, um, they can record or register eye movement because you have what's called a REM sleep, rapid eye movement. And what he would do is he would do his eyes in the dream state according to a pattern that was not something that was just random. It was a precise mathematical pattern to let them know I am, my body's asleep but I am a winner. Okay. I'm going to fly off on some tangents, but just please bear with me. This, this, this is, I've been studying this for years. I love this because what happens is when you experience a lucid dream, it is such a pleasant and fulfilling feeling that you don't want to come back. You don't want you. It's like if you could stay there, then everything is okay. My thought process is this: why, why, why is that such 
a beautiful experience. I believe it's because our all of our emotional baggage is is biochemical and physical. It's it's here in the body. In a lucid dream, you've transcended the physical body. Well, how do you know? Well, Allah says in the Holy Quran, I take men's souls at death and those that die not while they sleep. Okay, that tells me that when we sleep, we go somewhere. Now, I can't tell you where, and it says, and, the, and then we send them back, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, that means if he, if he takes men's souls at death and those that die not when they sleep if you take something that means something goes from this place to another place and if you send if you send them back that means they were someplace and came back okay but what i have experienced personally is no anger no sorrow no guilt I have I have personally experienced what I consider pure bliss. And so now every night I try to experience that. And what I have noticed is diet. Now I'm not I'm no saint. I, let me say that right up front. I'm no saint. I ain't clear. I'm aberrated as hell. Okay, so I'm gonna say that. Because I don't want anyone to think that Brother Luke Mon trying to make it seem like he's some elevated individual. No, I'm crazy. I have a bad. I have a very bad temper, and I'm 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 far from clear. Let's just make that clear. However, comma yeah. a lot is merciful. I've noticed that during the month of Ramadan, I have I have increased my consumption of fruit which are considered to be high frequency, that's high frequency energy. I have had maybe three or four experiences in one month. I have had, I've been trying to get these experiences for a while now. During the month of Ramadan, I'll say part of it is diet. Now, here's the, here's the technique that I use. Some of us, if not all of us, Allah will wake us up between two and three o'clock in the morning, correct? Has that happened? Yes, sir. Okay, now, if you go based on that ayat, I don't believe you're waking up because you're waking up. I believe that's Allah sending you back or sending us back. Hmm. And there have been times when I have said to myself, because you but before, if you want to have the lucid dream, uh, one of the things they, they teach you in the book, and I'll share the book with you that I, I study, you have to make the intention. You have to, before you go to sleep, you say, T tonight, I'm going to have a lucid dream. In Islam, that's called niyyah. That's called your intentions. Like if I say, I hereby resolve to do two rakahs, that's my niyyah. I'm making my intention. And then I say to myself, if Allah permits me to wake up at 2 o'clock or 2.30, then I will rise and give him praise. Okay? So then what happens is, between two and three o'clock a.m. is when you have what's called tahajud, correct? You do the tahajud. Yes. And mm -hmm. then I've noticed that almost 99% of the time when I do tahajud and I lay back down, I'm gonna describe to you what takes place with me. And the same thing has taken place with you, except some of you have been so fearful of this that you don't go through the door. In the South, they call it the witch riding your back. Science calls it sleep paralysis. It's a scary feeling if you don't understand it. So when it ha when it happens, when it happened before, I used to I hate I used to hate it as a child. It would ha happen all the time. I didn't like it, so I would shake it off before I would get into full a full-fledged sleep paralysis. But what happens is, and this is going to sound real crazy, I know some individuals might watch this and say, Brother Luke, I'm just making stuff up. This brother's crazy. I know I, I can only tell you what I experienced. I'm not asking y'all to send no contributions to Brother Luke, my sleep study. 
I'm not trying to make no money off this. I'm not trying to get nothing. I'm just sharing with you so that when you have these experiences, you don't think it's crazy. The way it happens is I'll do after making tahajud, I lay back down. For me, it usually occurs if I lay on my right side. I will doze off and then when you wait, you're going to wake back up. But when you wake up, you have to stay totally motionless. You can't move not one iota of anything. And what happens is you're going to be conscious, but your body's going to fall back to sleep. And so what it feels like, at least for me, I, and the, and the weird part about it is it happened to me at work one day about a, about a week ago. And in the room where the off, where I sleep at, at work is where the computers are set up. And there's always this little high pitched sound. And I noticed that as I was shifting, the sound changed. The sound changed frequency. Now, I can't explain it. But what happens is you're going to feel a vibration and then you're going to feel as though something is pushing you down into the bed, like something is there. Okay. Has anyone ever had that experience before? Okay. Sister Shannon said, absolutely. Okay. Yes, sir. It's a strange feeling. It feels like someone's there with you, pushing you down into the bed. And then what happens is I stay perfectly still. And this is going to sound weird too, but when this happened to me in October, 2012, I shook it off. Bill Lukman is not schizophrenic. Okay. Something within me said the next time this happens, don't be afraid, take a deep breath and relax. Okay. So now what I do when it happens, I'm not fearful of it now. So when it happens, I'm looking forward to it. I'm like, yeah, let's go. I'm, I'm ready. Relax, take a deep breath. I feel myself being pulled from my body. And this, I mean, this is probably going to sound crazy, and I'm probably not even going to post this on YouTube. Okay, this will just be for those of us that are on this call. Because I don't want no one to get this crazy impression that Brother Luke Mon is trying to make anything. But I know what I experienced. And I know the last part of the, the last part of attachment is usually my, my man, this is going to sound crazy as hell. Please, believers, please forgive me. My feet get pulled up into the air and the last point of attachment is my head. And I always say it's my pineal gland. And then after that, I, I feel that disconnect and my body gets pulled away. It's a real ear. It's a crazy feeling in the beginning, but then you get used to it. And then what happens is I travel at a high rate of speed. Sometimes I see certain things. Sometimes I don't, but I get pulled at a high rate of speed. There have been times, and I'm glad there's only a few believers here because I probably wouldn't even tell this story if there was more believers than this. There have been times when I have felt a hand in my hand as it's happening, like someone is present. Weird. It's just, it's, it's crazy, but this is what I've experienced. And then what happens is you see an image, like you might see a city or you might see a landscape Sometimes there's people there and you kind of just settle down into this scene and now you're there. Now, the first thing you have to learn to do, Sister Sharon, you got to control your emotions because the first lesson is in your mind, you're thinking, oh, I'm awake. Like the first thought is, oh my God, is this really what I'm experiencing? But if you get too emotional, 
it, it, you lose it and you wake up. So the first thing that happens is you have to say, okay, this is really happening. Now, there's something called dream sign that you use to let you know you're dreaming. If you see something in writing, the thing is, or if you see a clock, look for a clock. If you look at the clock, it's, it might say three o'clock. If you look away and look back, it might say 930. The time on the clock is not gonna stay the same. I don't fully understand why that happens, but when you see something in the dream and you turn away and you look back, it changes. Okay. Um, you know, Sister Tina again. Now, as you progress in this, you can start communicating with these individuals that are in the dream and you will receive information. Okay. Now, like I said, I'm gonna go off on a tangent. I don't even remember what the original question was, Sister Denise. So did I answer your question? This this subject matter is, is very near and dear to me, as you can see. This is very near and dear to me. Yeah, yes, yes, sir, you have. Cause I experienced that and my mind said you're you're this is this is real. Mm -hmm. That's you. That's you laying in that bed, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I tried to breathe, and I couldn't. I inhale, and there was no air. And I was running around, you know, uh, uh, turning on the fan. And I said, a lot, I can't breathe. And all of a sudden, I inhale and inhale the air. Mm -hmm. So as you were talking, um, I understood that because fasting it 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 levitates you in a way uh where you know your mind is uh um uh, your your mind um is not like you you're in this world but you're not of it. I, I used to wonder about that with Jesus, you know, they said, mm -hmm. Hey, you in the world, how are you gonna not be up? But it's it's a mindset, mm -hmm. uh, and then it's a mindset for you not to be bothered by anything. Mm -hmm. you, you know, so no matter what 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 is happening, but you know you're not excited about it. I mean, it's like it's it's just happening, mm -hmm. and and uh, or you're levitated to the point where you're on a beach, and uh, it's you you know you're not walking so mm -hmm. you so you must be flying on the beach and it and i remember the first time i saw it it was like i am actually flying on this beach you know mm -hmm. but i wasn't even more, so i was like whoa <laughs> you know where am i in another i i say a portal or, what, or whatever you know uh, what that will um cause us to that's that new mind mm -hmm. that that Jesus was talking about. Mm -hmm. And the minister saying, I can't leave until Jesus is formed in the people. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, God, I don't think we really know what's happening to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it keeps moving from level to levels. <sighs> okay, I'm done. Oh, thank you, sister. <laughs> See, we are there's a saying that we are not human beings having spiritual experiences. We are spiritual beings having human experiences. We are just visitors here. Remember our lesson. Now, this is just my, my opinion and my impression, but our teaching says um, the root of civilization is at the Holy City of Mecca, which means where wisdom and knowledge of the original man first started when the planet was found. Mother Taneta Muhammad broke down what was meant by when the planet was found, that would imply that we existed prior to coming here, correct? Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. So we're visitors. We're experiencing this. Um, 
trying to think there was something else, but I'll let's see if it comes back to me. Go ahead, Sister Sharon. I'm trying to think. It was something you said before um, concerning the lucid dream. I know several months ago, I think I mentioned this on one of the calls, where I heard the sound and my oldest son, he heard it also. And it was a hovering sound. I mentioned this to you, Brother Luke. I had called you on a separate call and I was telling you about it, how in that moment when I heard the sound, it was like, woo. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was being dropped off. And when I set up, I'm like, where's the sound coming from? And I went to the wall and pulled the extension cord out, but nothing was attached to the extension cord. And I'm looking around like, what just happened? And my son came in the room, was like, Mom, who came in your room? And I'm like, what do you mean who came in my room? He said he saw somebody walk in my room at the time the sound came up that he heard it because he was in the living room. And I'm just like, nobody was in my room. It's just me. But I found it like so strange. And I'm like, I know I just got dropped off. I know I did. Because his experience was he saw somebody walk in my room. He heard the hovering sound. But the sound was, it wasn't just in the room. It was everywhere. And for some strange reason, I don't know why I pulled the extension cord out the, out the wall because nothing was attached to it. And it's like, okay, <laughs> am I bugging out? No, because I know I have lucid, lucid dreams. I know I have um communications and not only me but my my youngest son and the middle one mm -hmm. like the youngest one he had this one <laughs> situation where he jumped out he was like they're coming and I'm like who's coming he was like the bumblebees I'm like where he's like right there he was just moving and but he was asleep but he was up physically moving, like they're coming the bumblebees. And I'm like, where are the bumblebees? And the, the middle one, the one that the minister spoke about, he said that he would leave at night to go somewhere to learn from some man that would be standing in front of the classroom. And I'm just like, okay, we we all have these experiences. Some of us are, are afraid to speak about it. And you know. Some of us do share it. And then, you know, is this something that's not real? Absolutely not. It is real. And a lot, it, he tells us about it in his own words in, in the Holy Quran. He takes our souls and he returned them to whom he pleases. Mm -hmm. It was um, several months ago. I had this, um, what I would call a, a lucid dream. I was in the car traveling with one of the sisters and her son. And ahead of us, I could see the airport. And her son, he's not in the Nation of Islam, but he had on a red bow tie. And somehow the red bow tie was in front of us. And I took my hand and put it inside the bow tie and pulled it down. And all I could see was colors, a whole bunch of just beautiful colors. And I wanted to go, and it was just bright and beautiful. And I wanted to go, and somebody's like, no, you can't go. You have to stay here. And I'm just like, no, I want to go. You spoke about it, Brother Luke, my how, you know, it's just so peaceful mm -hmm. and just being a part of what it is that you're experiencing is beautiful, it's magnificent. Mm -hmm. And it's like when when we're not done here, our experience here, Allah, He returns us because we all have a purpose. We all serve a purpose. And it's something that we have to do. Like the, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan always talks about his one more thing to do. Because Allah showed him, he told him. During Savior's Day, he said, they told me, they showed him. You know, so who are we that we would not have some of those same experiences? And, you know, live to talk about it or to share it. Mm -hmm. And one thing with me, when I don't like to have the lucid dreams when I'm home by myself. So I'll leave the light on. One, I'll leave one light on to know that I'm back. Because when I open my eyes, I'm like, okay, the light, the light is there. So I'm no, I know I'm in this, this reality and not somewhere else. So if I don't see that light, I know I'm stuck somewhere. 
So, you know, praise be to Allah, a few days ago, I had one experience where I could hear myself crying. And I'm like, you know, saying to myself, wake up, wake up. I was woke, but I couldn't open my eyes. I could just hear myself you know, just moaning and crying. I had, I could feel the, the tears on my face, but I just couldn't get up. I was there, you know, in the moment when everything was taking place and the colors that I saw was like, you know, when it's a fire and it's just that glowy brown and orange, it was like that. And when I woke up, I sat up on the side of the bed and I'm just like, oh, Allah, you know, was it real? That orange color. And, you know, the experience is real, but it's just not happening in this, in, this, in this reality here, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. it, it, it makes total sense to me. It makes total sense to me. Um, I'm going to wait with my comments. Uh, go ahead, Sister Tina. Oh, wow. Praise be to Allah. I'm just enjoying listening to... Um... Sister Denise and you and Sister Sharon talk about the, the lucid dreams and, and your experience. Um, I um, I just wanted to uh, mention again about how you and Sister Sharon's experience impacted me with the verse um, chapter 47, 35. And um, I'm just going to read it again. And be not slack so as to cry for peace. And you are the uppermost. And Allah is with you. And he will not bring your deeds to naught. And um, I just, I was very excited. So I expressed it in a very excited way, you know, earlier. So I just want to express it in a more calm way. Uh, that definition of peace that I read, and I'm going to go back to it, that definition of peace, freedom from disquieting or oppressive thoughts or emotions. After I, I, I said it the first time, the thought an emotion, the emotion of fear came to my mind. That is an oppressive emotion, you know, other than fear of Allah, which is a blessing. Fear of anything outside of Allah is an oppressive emotion. Is that right, Brother um, Lukman? Mm hmm Okay, so. Oh, Sister Tina, hold that thought, please. Yes, sir. Did you just not mention Surah 48 not too long ago? Uh, not Surah 48. It was 47. Surah 47. Who mentioned who? I thought someone. Okay. Well, this is close enough. The earthquake mm -hmm. that hit New York was 4.8. Wow. 4.8 .8 magnitude. 8? 8? 4.8 that just struck near Plain, North Plainfield. New Jersey. 4.8. Wow, 4.8. That's pretty high, isn't it? Wow. 4.8? Uh, I mean, no? it's, it's... What part of New it's York? Not, it's not big enough to destroy too much of anything. Mm -hmm. but it's enough to get your attention. Right. What part I'm of sorry, New York? I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that just... That's okay. That's okay, because we're on that. We're on that. Mm -hmm. She said, what part of New York? And then New York had a 5.5. Yes, ma'am. And my my yes. wife just sent me a a text, and I get and uh, from what that said was the said, so New Jersey got a four point eight, but New York got a five point five. Hmm. Wow, five point five. Praise be to Allah. Um, wait, mm. wait a minute. I gotta say something. Oh, Allah, you know I travel over to the org, and we go through the the tunnel. It's underwater. Uh-huh. And I'm telling you, I so much anxiety hit me. I'd be like, I gotta get off this bus. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'd be like, I don't want to go, but I gotta go. You know, the only way is through the tunnel. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> and I just be like, oh Allah. I'm like, is this something I experienced before, like drowning? And I'm like, oh Allah, please. You know, I know how to swim. I was a lifeguard, but can I get through all of this water? Can you get all that water? Just do oh. I wow. sure can't drink it all, that's for sure. For all real. Crazy, but constantly she calling on a lot. Constantly, yeah. constantly, constantly. <laughs> yeah. And 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 that's uh that freedom, freedom from disquieting or oppressive thoughts or emotions, a law. And so and and it so it took me back to that uh paragraph in closing the gap where that um we're in our darkest in your mm. darkest hour it's personal mm -hmm. you know he didn't say in our he said in your darkest hour um uh the, the uh what we need is within us um the 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 uh, he said in your darkest hour is the opportunity for triumph the opportunity for triumph is in you. And so it made me think about, of, of course, faith. And that faith brings us in contact with that peace. You know, so, you know, I, that's something that's been on my mind ever since we read it. And I've been just searching out throughout the Holy Quran and seeing what impressed on me, impress upon me regarding what's in me in my darkest hour and that peace is 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 a great part of it that that peace which is our nature you know and the more we're at peace is it, what i'm seeing is the more we're becoming ourself you know because ourself is a righteous muslim ourself is islam the minister said islam is not our religion islam is our nature mm -hmm. And that's peace. So um, y'all's experience was like a revelation for me in regards to when that um, time comes and we are in our, I'm in my darkest hour. Um, uh, there's another one here in 47, that's verse 29, where Allah says, or do those in whose hearts is a disease, wait, and, or do those in whose hearts is a disease think that Allah will not bring forth their spite? So to me, that, that, that means that people are hiding stuff in their heart. But it's a disease. But the day is going to come when Allah is going to bring that forth. You know? And so it may be people that we think is, we cool, we're cool. we cool with. It may be. Mm -hmm. You know? Oh. But that day will come when, no, what they are hiding in their hearts is going to come out. And... In that day, who knows? That could be my darkest hour to know mm -hmm. that somebody who I thought I could trust. No, you are totally against me. Totally. How will I deal with that? So um, y'all's experience is just an example. To me, it was, um, what is that? Um, uh, uh, what is that in, in Dianetics, Brother Lukman? Um an example, mass. What is that called? What mass? You talking about uh, mass? Nah, no mass. When you got mass, like you know, when when you draw a picture. Oh, you talking about the demo kit? Uh, yeah, yeah, demo yeah. kit. Yeah. Demo kit. There you go. Y'all's experience was a demo kit, or is a demo kit for me in regards to seeing that peace in the midst of um, an earthquake right up under your feet. Yeah. And in and in verse uh, 34, Allah says, surely those who disbelieve and hinder men from Allah's way uh, then die. Disbelievers, Allah will not forgive them. 
So if the ground had opened up or if the waters had come in on Sister Sharon or the grounds had opened up up underneath you, Brother Lukeman, or the waters come in on, came in on you and you perish, guess what? You will perish believers. Mm -hmm. You That's know, so that saying. would be the opposite effect, you know, and, and you will reap the ward or we would reap the ward. So either way, it's all good. That's what I'm I'm I, I, I'm seeing even more clearly. Either way, it's all good. If Allah keep me here, it's good. If He take me away, it's good. As long as I die a Muslim, That's die right. a believer. Yeah, all praises yeah. due to Allah. Yes, ma'am. On, on on that note, with that ayah, I'm gonna hit this real quick, and then we'll go to Sister Anya. But when you look at when you look at that ayah. I'm going to look at the Arabic real quick. Um, okay. Now, which I are you talking about, Brother Luke Mom? Uh, sir, 47, ayat number 29. Or do those in whose okay. hearts is the disease think that Allah will not bring forth their spite? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, if you look at, if you take that ayat, um, there's three, there's three keys in there. And this, this ayat, has definite ARC with Dianetic Tech. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have heart, you have disease, and you have spike. Now here's how this ayat lines up with the tone scale. That word heart in Arabic, um, and I know everyone doesn't read the Arabic, but if you if you look at the Arabic on the on the other side where the ayat is in English and you have the Arabic. Mm -hmm. The Arabic word for heart is kalaba. K, I'm not K, excuse me, Q A L A B A. And it's, the pronunciation is kalaba. Mm -hmm. That word kalaba in Arabic also means mind, it means soul, and it means spirit. Okay. So now we're talking about theta, right? Yes. We're talking about thought. Okay. We're talking about life force, correct? Yes. Okay. If you go into seven speeches, it's either page 50 or 51. The minister uses the word life force with respect to Allah, the originator of the heaven and earth. He uses the word life force. In the tech, we know life force is synonymous with theta and thought, correct? Yes. So now let's look at this ayah as an equation. And these key points are like in an equation where you have variables, those variables represent where you can input numbers to produce an output or an answer, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So if we look at this, look at, if we look at equation number 29, ayat number 29, this is a, look at it like a formula. Or do those in whose thoughts or those in whose mind is a disease. So now we look at the word disease in Arabic, the Arabic word is marid. And here's what it means. Here's the definition. It means to be sick. It means uh, an illness. Nafsi marid means psychopath. Ooh. Okay. So basically we're describing in the word marid, can we say that we're describing the characteristics that that come into existence below 2.0? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Those are all mental illnesses, correct? Apathy, grief, yes. hostility. Okay. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So, or do those in whose hearts is a disease think Allah will not bring forth their spite? So, whatever is hidden in our mind, whatever is hidden on our time track, it'll either be brought forth through auditing which is the bringing it forth under a controlled, in a controlled environment in order to release it and let it go. Or situations will take place that will cause those emotions to come forth, which will cause a self-destruction, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. so I hope that what you, exp what you witnessed with me and Sister Sharon was that coming forth in a controlled manner because we have followed the minister's instructions in studying the tech. That's mm -hmm. what I hope it is. 
<laughs> okay, well, whatever, well, however which way it came to be, it was, it was control. <laughs> my, fir my first thought went to the lesson, what makes rain, hail, snow, and earthquake? So, hey, that's, yes, hey, we, if we know who does it, then that, that takes some of the weight, you know, that, that lessens, that lessens the blow a little bit. <laughs> and that makes sense as far as the tech goes, because the tech, the teachings I've had for a lot of years before the tech came, mm -hmm. the tech helped me and is helping me process and understand the teachings better. Yes. You know, more clearly, more um, intentionally, mm -hmm. you know, so because it's helping me to get rid of a lot of thoughts that hinder my progress. So you get you know, the process from, down the locks. Yes, yes. So yes, sir. But I truly believe this. This, yeah, this the, the technology uh, plays a great, big, big part. If not one hundred percent in me for understanding the teachings far better than I ever had. You know, you know mm -hmm. the teachings. And, and the way Minister Farrakhan is giving it to us in his fine language <laughs> that he knows. Yes, ma'am. Yes. What I hope to do before we get off this call is to at least give my opinion as to why that is important. Mm -hmm. And if, in case I forget, just someone remind you, say, brother, remember you said you're going to give us some stable data as to why you think that is important because what I was blessed to see a couple of days ago, and I'm I'm going to share it with the believers because I think we should have it. It'll help us all. Um, thank you, Sister Tina, for that. Yes, sir. Thank Sister you. Anya. You're on mute. You still with us, Sister Anya? Maybe she stepped away for a moment. She's had her hand up for a while. Well, go ahead, Sister Sharon. We'll we'll wait when Sister Anya gets back. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. What Sister Tina just mentioned, um, the minister said, and I'm not quoting it exactly how he said it, but he said the tech Dianetics will help us get to supreme wisdom faster. And mm -hmm. I mentioned the other day about us reading you know, reading our lessons over and over and over again and reading and studying, having a good dictionary. It's not anything new that we're given from Dianetics. The minister gives us a glossary in the back of our lessons mm -hmm. and in the back of our, um, the study guides. And mm -hmm. the minister we also have a, a dictionary for the Supreme Wisdom. Mm -hmm. So we, we already had that in mind to study along with a dictionary. And I know as a child, my mother always said, when you're doing your work, have a dictionary so you can look up the words. And then with, you know, L. Ron Hubbard, they tell you don't go past a word that you don't understand. You know, look it up, parse the words. The minister told us to parse the words, clear the words. Mm -hmm. So the more we do that, the more we'll understand and the faster we'll understand our lessons and we'll be able to see it different. It was another point that I wanted to make. Um, but it's, it's not coming to me right now. But yeah, it's so vitally important for us to do that. And it, it removes engrams. It helps to remove engrams. The more we read, the better we get, the better we understand, the more we study the better we get, the more we understand it. And the more we're, we're able to focus in on what it is that Master Paul Muhammad brought for us to be well-versed in. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. No, thank you. For some of us, our engram is, is held in place just based on a misunderstood word. Does that make sense? I didn't hear you. I'm, I apologize. No, that's okay. That's okay. I said, uh, um, some of our engrams could be held in place just based on a misunderstood word. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And that 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 brings back to mind what Sister Sharon said the other day about we can get engrams from you know people reading to us. 
And so that just gives me a better understanding as to how that can happen because there's some um, platforms that I do not participate in when they're reading books uh, together because I noticed that when I did try doing that, there would be words that I don't understand, but nobody's stopping to uh, clear that word. So we, so we would read on and I would be stuck at that word that I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. So, so I find it more advantageous for me to read as difficult as it is for me to do it. It's more advantageous for me to read on my own mm -hmm. um, what I can so that I can take my time and, mm -hmm. you know, clear words, parse words that I, um, that I need to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Sister Ani, did you get back yet? Okay, hopefully you should. There yes, she Okay, um, well, the, the nature of what I was going to say initially has changed. <laughs> um, because it, my original comment was going to be about lucid dreaming, um, but it, it's, um, and then and then while you are, while the conversation went on, it's like okay, I don't want to talk about lucid dreaming, and then I was like, I don't know what I want to talk about, so I was going to put my hand down, and then. Um, cause I've, I've kind of like, I'm trying to, um, do so much here because I have to get ready to go and volunteer. And plus I have to, um, attend Juma prayer today. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm doing a lot of things in the background. Um, and I definitely need this recording so I can go back because so many things came up that I felt was so relevant, um, Part of it is the lucid dreaming. Um, my thought with that, um, I've, I've had those ex experiences as well. One, the, the very first time, I, it was a very big one where I had that paralysis and was aware that I was, I was conscious. And... My, like my look to to the side as it's like hey you see something going by the the bedroom door was open to my right but I saw myself walking past the hot you know going down the hallway <laughs> walking past the door that the open door and then that that freaked me out because I'm wondering if I'm here laying in the bed why am I walking down the hallway and and I wanted to scream, and so I tried to scream, but I couldn't, you know, because, and I, I didn't know what it was going on at the time, but it's like, I couldn't move. And I, as hard as I tried to scream, there was no sound, there was no nothing. And um, so that was a very weird experience. Um, and that, you know, I understand it better now, since I've been on this platform, and you've explain to us about lucid dreaming so i understand now what was taking place mm -hmm. um, but there's other experiences that i've had um i'm a one for one thing i'm a very and you said you're not going to put this up on the um I, you know what sister anya my gut is telling me my gut is telling me, because I'm thinking about something Brother Jabril said in a ministry class, I think it was back in 1997 in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. He said, the one thing that we should not do is when we have information, we should say, oh, I can't give it to you. This is a little too deep for you. He said, you should never do that. And I'm paraphrasing it, but he said, you shouldn't do that because who are you to judge the depth of someone else's thinking? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not so much that, but it's some of the things, well, 
I'm I'm thinking about posting it because this is something that, and I noticed this when I used to talk about this in the prisons. Other brothers were having these experiences, but they were not talking about it because they didn't want to appear crazy. Okay, well then let me just change the way I say it then. Okay, because I might I might go ahead and post it. I I probably will post it. Yes, sir. So certain things I'll leave out. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um. So I've had experiences where, um. I, in in a wake state, you know, conscious wake state, um, I may turn a corner or look up and see a particular scene or something, or hear a particular sound, voices or something, and I am automatically um, not transported somewhere, but I know that what I'm what I'm experiencing in that moment in the conscious realm is something that I was, it, 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 I know it's from an experience that I've had in another realm. And when I say another realm, I always, I don't say another realm. I just say, oh, that's from the dream. That's from one of my dreams. When I have these experiences, that's that's what will come to me. I just think to myself, oh, that's from one of my dreams. And I've experienced this before. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what it is. I, I don't know what the dream is because most of the time when I wake up, I may know, sometimes I'm aware that I dreamt, but I don't know what, what, what took place. But I mm -hmm. know that I, I'm aware that I dreamt that I just came out of a dream, but I don't know what the dream was. Mm -hmm. And and then other times, sometimes I do know what the dream was, but most of the ones when I have these conscious waking experiences, it'll be from one of those dreams that I'm not aware what took place in the dream. Mm -hmm. um, and And then, there's other experience I have when I just know something and I don't know how I know. Um, mm -hmm. So, so those are very weird experiences. Um, and then while, while you all were talking, another experience that came to my mind was years ago. And I, I think I've mentioned this before, but years ago, while waiting for, a meeting to start, and this was in St. Louis. Um, a sister Zeddy, may Allah be pleased with her, um, and I were sitting together waiting for the minister to start. The minister came um, early and was took his place on the stage um, and was waiting. You know, he was just sitting there waiting, and with his hands clasped together. Um, his thing, two two index fingers pointing upward, and he looked like he was in a meditative state, but just observing everything in the room. You know, and people were moving about, setting up the AV and all of that. You know, testing the equipment. And Sister Zeddy and I were talking, and all of a sudden, in you know, looking at the minister. It just looked like his whole skin was cracking and shedding, just just like you know, like an animal sheds its skin. Um, you know, some animals shed their skin. And I was about to say to Sister Zeddy, "Do you see that? Do you look at the minister? Do you see that?" And it and as I was thinking to say that to her, she turned to me and said. Look at the minister. Do you see that? <laughs> Do you see what I see? And she was seeing the same thing that I was seeing. So initially, my thought was, uh, you know, I'm just imagining what I'm seeing. But here was somebody else with seeing the same thing that I was seeing. And and that was another. I I just thought about that experience. I'm not going to try to explain it, but. Mm -hmm. um, I thought about that experience as I was listening to everybody else's experiences. And um, 
and then the other point that I wanted to make was um, in preparation for us to go through mm -hmm. earlier we were talking about the three years and um, so you know being able to get through those and um, relying on the information that we've been taught um, to help get us through uh, I, I, I often get the sense that um, what that what um, number one is making a last a law is sufficient for all our needs and that that is a big part of us getting through those three, three years um, because ideally we would like to be in the comfort of our homes with all of the supplies that we need and um, all of our books and you know access to solar and you know everything else in but um, and and with people that we um, you know uh, are, have a good connection with um, but of course that that may not be the case we none of us know exactly what we're going to have to face um, but I often get the sense when I think that I'm lacking in oh I need you know haven't read this book I haven't studied this I don't have enough food you know stocked up I don't have this that and the other but I, some oftentimes when I get those thoughts another thought comes in it's like a like something is telling me don't worry about that because whatever you your experiences are those are the experiences that you need mm -hmm. to, to um in preparation for what you personally would experience so it's like each one of us whatever we're experiencing whatever we are studying and the, and what we the things that we will remember of the teachings that we've been taught are going to be the things that we need to get us through mm -hmm. so, so and i'll give an example of um years ago being in the hospital uh in in writhing pain not knowing what was wrong with me and unbeknownst to me I was being prepped for surgery and um, I, I remember when when I found out that I was that they were prepping me for, for surgery and I was like I didn't consent to having a surgery the first words to me was well if you don't have, have this surgery you're going to die and so if I had bought into that way of thinking, it's quite possible my body would have um, started to deteriorate, you know, because based on the pain I was having, it made me, I could easily have bought into the fact that I was going to die. Um, but instead, my mind went to the example that the minister has or had already laid for us when he was in the hospital and his near you know near death experience three minutes from death and his thoughts of that if this was his time that he was ready and he was so appreciative and thankful and um was had a heart full of gratitude for everything Allah had blessed him with, um, e even the pain, mm -hmm. he was grateful for even for that. And I found I found myself having that those same kind of thoughts laying up in that hospital bed, mm -hmm. and um, and that's what got me through it. And um, you know, all praises due to Allah. I'm still here, 
you know, and, and I ended up not having a surgery. Um, but again, I use that as an example because because of the minister's example, I was able to apply that same thing in, a, in when I was in a situation that called for that and it got me through that, that difficult time. Um, and I remember that the minister um, told his um, laborers one time that, that we were going to, um, it, a time would come when we would be backed into a corner and not know how to get out of it. And our only way to get through that was to call on Allah and seek refuge in Allah and say, La ilaha illallah, there is no God but Allah. So that's what I was, um, uh, those are the thoughts that came up. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. <laughs> Assalamualaikum. Thankful, thankful, thankful. This is coming from the sister scientists. Sister Sharon, did you have something? Oh, I was just um, reading a text message. We got instructions that came down. I don't know if I should mention it now or wait until after. You mean off the recording? Yes, sir. I guess if that's where your spirit is leading you, then we'll, we can wait. Yes. Okay. Um, two quick points. Uh, no. Really three. Uh, I want to touch on another aspect that I think is connected to the lucid dreaming. That's number one. I'm going to share with you three of the books that, I, that I've been kind of going through over the past couple of years. And then the final thing I want to share with you is why it's so important for us to maintain our contact with the minister now in his, in his absence. And it's just based on what I've been blessed to see over the, the past couple of days. So number one, <clears throat> in Heidi to Live, book number two, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, and I'm going to try to see if I can give you the exact, the exact quote. Um, let's see. I want to say page 50. Let me see. Is it page 50 or is it page 51? Uh, Page 50, okay. So, How Do You Live, book two, page 50. The Most Time Elijah Muhammad says this. He says, a fast should be from two to three days without eating food. If we are seeking spiritual advancement, we should fast for three days. Now, why is that relevant? Not too long ago, I asked myself the question, I know that's stable datum. I want to go and find out what is the significance of three days? Why not four? Why not two? Why three? So he gave us three days. Now here's what science has shown recently. Science has shown recently, first, the pineal gland is considered to be the spiritual center. Now there's a book called DMT, the spiritual molecule that you should get your hands on. Very, very good book. This is what it looks like, if I can find it. Uh, where's my book? Here it is. This is what the book looks like. Okay, DMT, The Spirit Molecule. Excellent book. Uh, and what is known about the pineal gland is it produces a chemical called DMT. Okay, dimethyltryptamine. And the interesting thing about this is the highest concentrations of DMT occur between 2 and 5 a.m. Right at the time when we're having the sleep paralysis and at, this, it's at the time when we are usually getting up for tahaju, correct? Y'all with me? 
Okay, now inside the pineal gland, uh, there are crystals, very small, small microscopic crystals. And what the science teaches us now is that through the process of what's called piezoelectric or piezoelectricity, that it causes these crystals to vibrate. And I can't remember it, it, the exact location, but I'll, I'll try to get this and, and bring it to us the next time we meet. There's also crystals in our in our ear. There's a certain area in our ear where those crystals. I, my my thought is that when those crystals in the pineal gland vibrate, somehow they connect with the ear, and that's what produces that ringing that we hear. And we know what the ringing is. Okay, so there's a connection between the pineal and the ear and these crystals. Now, interesting thing is in the body. When you, when you study pharmacology, you have some chemicals that are called agonistic and you have some chemicals that are called antagonistic. And what that means is certain chemicals favor a certain process and Allah says in the Holy Quran, he creates all things in pairs. So if there's a chemical or a hormone uh, or a neurotransmitter or a neuropeptide that produces an operation in one direction, then there has to be an opposing neuropeptide, an opposing hormone, or an opposing chemical that turns it off. Does that make sense? Okay. With that thought in mind, the thought came up one day when I was going, kind of like going down the rabbit hole. What can I do to increase DMT production in order to increase these spiritual experiences? interesting thing is when you pull up the research between DMT and increasing it in the medical journal I pulled up, it said one of the ways that you increase DMT is through fasting for three days. So the research bears witness to what the most honorable Muhammad has been teaching us all these years. Now, what happens though is that the body, if the DMT turns on, there's a chemical in the body that flips it off. And it's called MOA, monoamine oxidase. So anytime a word ends in A-S-E, that's an enzyme and it turns things off. The fasting for three days decreases monoamine oxidase, which is in the body naturally, that if the DMT gets to a certain level, the monoamine oxidase turns it off. Does that make sense? Okay. It's like the children want to watch the TV and you come turn the TV off. Okay. That's how those things operate. Child wants to play video games. It's time for dinner. What do you do? You come and you turn the video game off. That's how the body operates. Fasting decreases monoamine oxidase which allows the DMT to increase. And after three days of fasting, you have a higher level of DMT. Now, I'm curious with regards to Ramadan, because when we look at what's called Lalat al Qadr, the night of power, that could be the accumulation of fasting during that whole month. And then on the odd number nights is when we pray to have that spiritual experience, correct? It just so happens that the, the eclipse takes place on an odd number night. Just something to think about. There's something else that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught us in Hadith to Live that also decreases monoamine oxidase that allows us to increase our DMT if we are fasting. And guess what that is? Sister Sharon, you want to take a guess? What was your question? I felt the vibration again. What'd you say? Oh, shit. What is it? Coffee? <laughs> it was coffee. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Coffee. 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 So as we increase, as we drink coffee, coffee reduces monoamine oxidase. And reducing monoamine oxidase increases DMT. 
So we're taught that during the fast, what can we do? Water, coffee, correct? And to my understanding, tea is never mentioned, is it? Okay. So if we want to actually prepare ourselves physically to have these spiritual experiences, then the things we want to do is we want to stay up on our prayer. We want to try to learn the prayers in Arabic if we can. And the reason why is, and this is this is just my belief, I'm, I'm trying to find the research out there that will back this up, but my hypothesis is this. Saying our prayers in Arabic becomes almost like a singing, correct? The roof of the mouth is a resonating chamber, correct? The third ventricle and the pineal gland are right above the roof of our mouth. As we do our prayers in Arabic, those vibrations resonate off what's called the bony palate of the, the upper part of the mouth, which is the base of the skull. And I believe that the vibration produced through the Arabic will cause the pineal gland and the crystals to resonate. Mm -hmm. And that also will facilitate the production of the DMT and allow us to have these spiritual experiences. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, there's a video. Go ahead, Sister Sharon. You're, you're on mute. You're on mute. I'll wait. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I got I, 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 I got my notes, so I I'm, I keep track okay. of where I'm going. <laughs> yes, sir. When you mentioned the the palate and how the pineal gland is above the palate, what we say from our voice box that vibration when we speak a uh, negative word that vibration hits the pineal gland and it causes the pineal gland to go um uh, to sleep so to speak or to go crazy and it causes issues in the body like with the thyroid. Mm -hmm. Holding on to anger and all of that stuff. So I just wanted to bear witness to that part. And <clears throat> it sends the negative vibration. And it causes the, the crystals in the pineal gland to um, vibrate um, like rock music. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. causes a disturbance. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. We, and it, sh it also shuts down the hearing. Mm -hmm. When we speak those negative words, those negative vibrations. Oh, yes, ma'am. Let's let's touch on that real quick. Um, we spoke about this once before, but uh, Mother Taneta Muhammad in one of the articles mentioned a doctor by the name of Dr. Mona Harrison, right? I think we mentioned it before. And yes. her research was on water, and and there's a doctor, a ja I believe I believe he's Japanese, Dr. Emoto, that speaks about the significance of intention and and speaking kind words with water because the water stores the energy of our intentions correct you're familiar with that okay. yes sir that research has already been documented now based on what sister sharon just brought up it, it's very very significant because when you look at what's called the third ventricle which sits above the roof of our mouth the third ventricle, the, just as the heart has ventricles, the brain has ventricles. The four ventricles of the brain is the area in the brain where it's filled with water, what's called cerebral spinal fluid. Interesting thing is, I believe it's above the third ventricle, you have what's called the choroid plexus, where cerebral spinal fluid is actually fabricated or manufactured. And choroid plexus the literal translation is the black plexus. So it's it's almost like the triple darkness inside of our brain. This water is produced, cerebral spinal fluid. So, you know, based on what sister's saying, when we speak, we are actually putting that energy into the water of our own mind. Part of our sicknesses are based on the fact that we're just negative and nasty individuals. So back talk, not uh, uh, slack talk, and um, slack talk and backbiting. Sooner or later, will come back to haunt us in the form of sickness. Does that make sense? 
Okay. Uh, that was just the one point based on Sister Shan, what Sister Shan was saying. Um, the Buddhist used to practice this for thousands and thousands of years, and it's called yoga nidra, what's called dream yoga. And the concept is based on the fact that when we sleep, if we sleep eight hours, then we're really sleeping one third of our life away, correct? Mm -hmm. And so the basic concept of yoga nidra is if you can learn how to become conscious in your sleep state, then you're not losing all those years. There have been some inventors that have, have used lucid dreaming and have solved problems in a dream state. They brought that solution and actually applied it. Now, I'll bear witness to this. When I first went to college back in 87, um, i never forget this. Uh, I went to what's called Norwich University, which is the Military College of Vermont. And I had gotten recruited there to play football. I was a computer science mathematics double major. And I never forget, oh, wait a minute. I remembered I had gotten sick I was in the infirmary and I had a computer assignment I had to turn in. And I remember the solution to this assignment came to me in a dream. So I, I wrote this computer program for my class. And I remember my instructor telling me that he said, the program works. There's a simpler way to do it what I had put down was a, a complex way of doing the program, but there was a simpler way. But the bottom line is I was able to, I was given that solution in a dream state. Now I say that to say this, and this is going back to sister Sharon. Once you get into this dream state and you can overcome that emotion. And if you can begin to speak in that dream state, you will begin to receive information. One of the most important things to do if you want to practice the lucid dreaming is keep a notepad or something close to the bed. And when you wake up, write it down. Write down everything. And when you write down everything and you get to the end, guess what you're going to do? Go back to the beginning, go over it again, and try to pick up the additional data you can contact. Because what you're training your brain to do, you're training your brain to remember the details. Some individuals actually have dream journals where they have documented dreams over the course of 10, 20, 30 years. And so that's part of what allows an individual to become more developed in the process of having the lucid dreams. The three books that I have, and I'm going to share these with you. One is called Dreaming Yourself Awake. That's the book right there. Dreaming Yourself Awake. The author's name is B. Allen Wallace. This book is called Dream Yoga and the Practice of Natural Light. That's that book right there. But the book that has taught me the most this is like the, the lucid dreaming Bible to me. It's called Lucid Dreaming, The Gateway to the Inner Self. And that's what that book looks like right here. Okay. And I have noticed that in this book, there are certain things in this book that actually have some connections with the tech. Uh, and have connection with, and I'll give you this example, with our teachings. I'm going to read something to you from this book, and then I want you to tell me what comes to your mind. It says, this is on page five. The chapter is called Stepping Through the Gate. It says, somewhere in this time period, I also recognize the presence of an inner advisor, for lack of a better term. At certain times, when I considered things deeply, an inner knowing appeared in my mind. It was such a natural thing. 
I assumed everyone experienced this. It was like having the service of a wise old man inside. What does that sound like? <laughs> if it be quiet, you said a wise old man inside. Inside. Mm -hmm. Um. Come on, say it. Say the, it. The one that goes and gets the information. What's his name? The, the you're, talking, you're talking about the file clerk. Yeah. Okay, so you, so the okay, so we go file clerk from the tech. The file clerk from the tech. But what does that sound like with regards to study guides? Is that that's not is the self spirit? Is that the like like spirit which exhorts, <laughs> guides, reproves? Yeah. Okay, warns, yeah. yeah, and accuses us when we go contrary to what's right. Okay, so 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 we have that uh, that um, self correction mm -hmm. which within us that nobody has to tell us, you know, well, it's you will know because, mm -hmm. because it guides you. You know, it might say, why do you say that? <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like, why, why are you talking about it? You know, mm -hmm. you need to clear that up. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So and there's some, so there's some, huh? Silver 75. Mm -hmm. Now, but for some reason, I had, I, now, for some reason, I had a Sura listed here. I'm going to read this Sura and find out why, why did I put this surah next to that? Why did I do that? So the surah is surah 50, ayat number 18. It says, oh, he utters not a word, but there is by him a watcher at hand. So that's how that's how I connected it. Um, <clears throat> so lucid dreaming, I mean, it's, it, it, it's hard it's hard to really put put it into words unless you experience it. it it almost becomes like now i know i know well i won't go down that road but i know we've all did some things in the past that you know took us to a whole nother level if you understand what i'm saying this allows an individual to experience a natural high that is such a wonderful experience for me it changed my whole viewpoint on life. It just changed the way I look at life in general. Okay. Okay. Now, final point is this. Why is it so important for us to maintain our contact with the minister now and in his absence? Now, this is just based on my opinion, but this, this actually started the last time we met when we were talking about civilized means to teach the knowledge and wisdom of the human family of the planet Earth, remember? Yes, sir. Okay, so this is just, uh, let's see, this was Wednesday morning when I woke up. This was the first thing that was on my mind, Okay. This is almost like a type of processing. So let's go question by question. Question number one, did Master Farad Muhammad civilize the most honorable Elijah Muhammad? Oh, yes. Okay, we can say yes. Okay, yes. now, would that mean that he taught most time Elijah Muhammad, the knowledge and wisdom of the human family of the planet Earth. Yes. Okay. Now, the next question that came to my mind was this. Because we know the Savior had access to books that we don't have access to, correct? Yes. Now, can we say that those books were the best of the books of knowledge and wisdom of the human family of the planet Earth? Yes, sir. Okay. Could we then say that the Savior chose 
and was able to summarize everything that was necessary into 104 books. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, the number 104 is very significant on the level of chemistry. And the reason why that number 104 is significant is in chemistry, there's a process called um, glycolysis, which is the breakdown of sugar. And what happens is the body has to break down sugar for energy, correct? Glucose. Yes, okay. sir. So what happens is when the body breaks down the sugar, there's three cycles that it goes to. One is called the Krebs cycle, and then there's a final part, and then the outcome, the body's going to produce water. At the final stage of the process, this was years ago, I was going down this rabbit hole because I was trying to see how the numbers line up. I said, what is the significance of this number 104? Well, there, there is a protein and there's a process on the cell structure at the final stage that produces the water, it's made up of 104 parts. I just thought that was interesting. Anyway, can we say that the 104 books that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad read were the best books based on the knowledge and wisdom of the human family of the planet Earth? Could we say that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, could we then say that the reason the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has been and is successful is based on his level of mastery of our teachings? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Question number seven. Now, family, this is just exactly how it came out, and I was just writing it down just like it came out. Allah teaches man by the pen what man knew not, correct? Mm -hmm. yes, so we, sir. Give, we give all credit to Allah. Question number seven is, if he has a level of mastery of our teachings, and our teachings is a distillation of the best books of the human family, then what he would he have a level of mastery of the best knowledge of the human family? Makes sense. That makes sense, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, now, why did the word distillation come up? Because when you do the process of distillation, when you distill water, you apply heat, the water evaporates and rises, but the particulates that are in the water can't rise with the water. Can't so the rise. particulates stay behind and the pure water rises, right? Right. So when the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad is reading the 104 books, he is distilling if we use the, chemo, the, 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 the the terminology from chemistry, he's taking the best parts that are particular for us here in North America, correct? Could we say that? Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. So then we could say, mm -hmm. could this be the reason why he is successful in communicating, in communication with the human family because he speaks the language of the human family? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. In other words, I mean, let's, let's look at this. When you look at the fact that the Savior traveled around the world and touched every continent, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And he was able to speak all the languages, basically, right? Mm hmm What comes to mind is then contained in our teachings is the best of the human family. Now, if we look at the particulars of the human family, we have to look at the black, the brown, the red, the yellow, and the white, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, when you look at the brown, the brown represents which, which family member? Japan. The, the Japanese, right? Yes, sir. The red represents the Native American, so-called Native American, who were exiled 16,000 years ago from India, correct? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. And then the yellow represents whom? Chinese. 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 And then the white represents the Caucasian. 
Now, if the Savior studied all these books, but he gave 104 to the Most High Elijah Muhammad, then the Most High Elijah Muhammad took that, and this is just how, this is my perception, took that wisdom, put it in the language that he knew to make it applicable to the black man and black woman in the wilderness of North America, correct? Yes, sir. Yes. So that's the dis distillation, right? He, so he, that's the distillation. So the minister and his first assignment is to take that and put it in the fine language that he knew. Mm -hmm. What was the language that he knew? In closing the gap, he talks about all the things he learned in school, but they were not relevant until he studied the teachings of the Most High Elijah Muhammad, correct? Yes, sir. So now when the minister's teaching, if he's teaching from the teaching, the teaching, I want to preface it with this this Bible verse. The book of Acts, it says this. And it just so happens that Pentecost is coming up soon, correct? Is after, it? After the eclipse, isn't Pentecost coming up soon? I have no idea. Can, some, can someone pull that what? up real quick? What do you mean by that? What's Pentecost? Pentecost. You mean Pentecost. Isn't like, that a Christian uh, celebration about, or something? Uh, uh, being in one place. Can 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 some can someone can someone pull it up on the phone real quick? Just pull up Pentecost. Oh. If not, we'll we'll look it up in a minute. But the main thing is this: in the Book of Acts, this is going back okay. to something that was mentioned earlier uh, in our discussion. It says. And this might be relevant to you too, too, Sister Sharon. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Right. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rush, a rushing mighty wind. Yes, sir. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there well, appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were okay. all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling of Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Now yeah. why is that relevant? When the minister has been speaking to the multitudes around the planet. Can we say he has been successful because he has the ability to speak all of the languages? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So would that imply, would that imply that our teachings is a distillation of all of the truths of the black, the brown, the red, the yellow, and the white? And that is why when the minister speaks, every group of people hear the best of their own teaching. That's right. Yes, sir. Right. Because right. our lessons is the fulfillment, meaning in our lessons is the best of all of those teachings. Yes. Now I say that to say this. One, you know, so I what I started to do, I said, okay, let me make a list of all the Japanese scientists and philosophers. Let me make a list of all the Chinese philosophers and scientists and mathematicians. Let me look at all the Indian scientists and mathematics so look at the best of all of those families and then just out of the blue i said okay there's one book called it's one book by confucius uh and it's called the analects and it just so happened in book one book one of the analects is in total harmony with lost Fam muslim lesson number one question number 11 i think that's have you not have you not learned that your work shall be bond regardless of whom or what? Is that the question? Yes, sir. Book one of the Analects by Confucius goes into the whole science of your word being bond. Mm. So if wow. I'm speaking to someone who has the background of Buddhism or Confucianism, and I talk about question number 11, they're going to hear Confucius. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. So... Could every member, this is question number nine, could every member of the human family hear a high representation of their own knowledge? 
And I would say yes, and that's why the minister has been so successful. And then the last question was based on mathematics. In mathematics, we have something called a system of equations, meaning if I'm given five equations, there's a way that I can solve all five equations simultaneously in such a way I can come up with one solution that is a, that is a solution for all five equations. Mm -hmm. Now, without seeing that, it might be a little difficult to, 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 to uh, without the mass, you probably can't see it, but the bottom line is this, based on that mathematics, that would imply, and that, that answer is called a solution set. And the solution set solves all five equations at the same time. Hmm. Could that mean that our lessons represents the solution set that solves the problems of the black, the brown, the red, the yellow, and the white? Yes, sir. Now I'm gonna make this statement and there might be some that might not like this statement, but this is how I feel. When you look at the best of the Caucasian race or the best teaching to me, it's what's given in the Church of Scientology. It's the tech. It's the tech. To me, the tech, I've been to colleges, I've had coursework. Nothing has moved me more than what L. Ron Hubbard has taught in the tech in right. the of knowledge and wisdom of the human family of the planet Earth. Yes, sir. Brother Luke Mon. Mm -hmm. When you uh, just said one of the things uh, that you just said, um, <clears throat> it made me think about the Holy Quran and that out of the, Anbalaj Muhammad said out of all the books mm -hmm. that he was given, the Holy Quran was the, um, what did he, how did he say? The greatest, the best? What the was greatest the word? or the best. Okay. But it, 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 it was right up there as number one. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Quran is the book that we are supposed to um, make our life, make the way we walk, the way we behave, the way we, the way, the way we act, mm -hmm. right? The Holy Quran, Prophet Muhammad was the Holy Quran walking. It says, Sister Aisha said that, right? Mm -hmm. His wife Aisha said that. And the minister says that, the Holy Quran is going to get us to the door, mm -hmm. but there's going to be another book to get us through the door. Mm -hmm. So I, when you just said what you said, I can't remember what it was you said, but it made me think of the Holy Quran. It, it just made me think of the Holy Quran. I can't remember my whole train of thought with that, but mm -hmm. um. And I read something today in the Holy Quran. I'm not at my magnifier right now, so I can see it. So I'm going to paraphrase where it, it Allah exhorts us to remind by means of the Quran to, mm -hmm. to, to, um, uh, not, it, the word wasn't remind, but I, I can't think of the, the, the word that was used, but the Holy Quran is how we, Remind one another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to say remind, you know, um, like I see somebody laughing at somebody else. And, and like it says in the apartments, let not women laugh at women. Perchance they may be better than they, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. or let people laugh at people. Um, so we get so much instruction on how to treat one another, how to treat the minister. That's in the apartments as well as throughout the Quran, but especially in the apartments, I remember how mm -hmm. to treat the prophet. That's how to treat the minister. We don't, oh my God. So yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to ramble on, but yes, sir. Okay, that's okay. Uh, on a mathematical level, uh, one day I, uh, the thought came to my mind, how could a person be a book? And I think this is in one of our Zoom meetings. How can a person be a book? And I was looking at this from a mathematical standpoint. And it was it was it occurred during the time I was studying a, a level of mathematics called set theory. And the concept is called a power set. And to make a long story short, <clears throat> when you have 
again, if you have like a bowl that has three items in it, okay, what you do is you take the number of items in that bowl and you put it as the exponent over the number two. And that gives you the total number of choices you can make with regards to those three pieces of fruit. So two to the third power is eight. Two times two times two is eight. So there's eight options. When I apply that same concept to the Holy Quran, based on the question, can a person become a book or can a person become the Holy Quran? It would imply that an individual would have an in-depth knowledge of every ayat of the Holy Quran, correct? Yes. And they would have an in-depth understanding of how to combine ayats with other ayats to produce other levels of understanding, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Some verses are decisive. They are the foundation of the book and some are allegorical. That means they would have a mastery of the Holy Quran and all the ayats. Mm -hmm. Now, it just so happens. If you, there's two ways you can look at the ayats in the Holy Quran. You can look at the ayats, which is, I think it's 6,236. Those are the ayats. Not including the bismillah. If you include the bismillah, then you get another number. Interesting thing is this. If you take two to the power of 6,236, which is the number of ayats in the Holy Quran, you're going to get this long number to the power of 1877. Wow. Mm. If you include the bismillah, which is two to the power and you get another number, it's going to give you a long number to the power of 1910. Mm. That's not a coincidence. Hmm. So there's so much more in our lessons and the mathematics that bears witness to the Savior, bears witness to the Most High Elijah Muhammad, and it has to bear witness to the Messiah. The Honorable Minister Louis Barakan. Mm -hmm. But it also has to bear witness to us as well if we are doing what we have to do and the work that we have to do in his absence. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So we have to master these lessons because when we speak to people from different groups and different religions, we don't fully understand the effect we're having on them they hear in the minister's words, someone from Japan listening to the minister might hear the great philosophers from Japan. Why? Because they're going to hear the minister's teaching. They hear him teach. The minister's teaching uh, what the Most High Elijah Muhammad gave us, right? But yes. the Japanese hears the wisdom in his own language. Yes. The Chinese is going to hear in his own language. The Indian will hear in his own language. And that's why the minister has been successful. Our teachings is the knowledge and wisdom of the human family of the planet Earth. And this is also why there's such ARC between our teachings and the Church of Scientology. Why? Because the teachings of the Church of Scientology comes from the knowledge and wisdom of the human family of the planet Earth. When you look at the fact that L. Ron Hubbard studied the teachings of the Indians, meaning India, the Bhagavad Gita, the Vedas, the Upanishads. He has studied the teachings of J J the Japanese. He has studied the teaching of the Chinese, the I Ching, the Tao Te Ching, the Thamapada. And guess what? Did you know L. Ron Hubbard studied the Holy Quran? Yeah, I think I heard you mention that. that and that was based on a Scientologist said, uh, they have the the home in New Jersey, and they said one of the uh -huh. books that's on his shelf is it's the Holy Quran. Yep. So L. Ron Hubbard studied the black, the brown, the red, the yellow, and then he produced the white. He gives credit to who? He said this all comes from the Asiatics. Mm -hmm. This is why their teaching and our teaching has such ARC. His is coming from a nuclear physics theology. 
Let me read that one quote real quick. Here's what he says. This is from the Phoenix, this is from the Phoenix Lectures. And he says, see if I can find it real quick. And of course, I'm not going to be able to find it when I'm trying to find it. But he says, he talks about a union between religion and science. Uh, come on, can I find it now? Of course not, because that's not where I want to find it. Mm. I'll find it and have it for us next time. But he talks about a union between religion and science. Isn't that called a a mathematical theology, or or that's a scientific theology, right? Yes, yes sir. sir. We have a mathematical theology, right? Yes, sir. Don't those two things go together? Yes, sir. Absolutely. All right. Praise be to Allah. Go ahead, Sister Tina, and we'll get it. Go ahead and wrap it up. Okay. Um, when this is just a question that I'm putting out there because it came to my mind. It's like a cognition. When you had mentioned. Uh, question number 11 in Lost Found Muslim Lesson number one, uh, have you not learned that your word shall be bond regardless of whom or what? Mm -hmm. And you said something about the Japanese culture. Mm -hmm. that, that has, Okay. The, the question came to my mind, could it be that our Lost Found Muslim Lesson number one is a culmination of all of the cultures as far as speaking their language. That's what my belief is. And okay, be, and, and then I looked at, okay, it's 104 books. That resolves to the number five. There's 14 question and answers in Lost Found Muslim Lesson number one. That resolves to a number five. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure. What is What does the number five represent? Justice. Justice. Wow. So, so, ah, uh, that, and why, and this is, you know, this has always been a question in my mind. Well, not always, but since we got the correction of the lesson number one from Minister Farrakhan, it's, it has been in my mind. Why is number one our assignment first? I know it says what it says in, in, in um, instructions to the laborers. And so I said, I'm going to go back and because I got a little bit more data now, a little bit more information now from, you know, this conversation. Mm -hmm. But why is it lesson number one, our lesson first? So I'm going to go back into what Master Farah Muhammad says as to why. And see if I can get a better understanding. Well, the first thing we can look at is lesson number one lays the base of our work today and gives the student a clear knowledge of himself and his heavenly home, the best part of the planet Earth. That's that's where we can begin. There's something about lesson number one that teaches us something about ourselves. Mm -hmm. Now, since you said that, I'll throw this out here for consideration. Again, just based my opinion, studying the lessons. When you look at the first part of the lessons, first question is, why isn't the devil selling the best part of planet Earth, correct? Yes. Okay, then we got Musa. Why did Musa have a hard time to civilize the devil? Mm -hmm. Why did we let Columbus discover? Why did we run Yakub? Why did we take Jerusalem from the devil and... Why does the devil call our people illiterate? And no, Africans. The devil African. call our people Africans. The main part is, do those all represent valences in ourself? Hmm. Is there a Columbus in us that's always trying to discover the poor part? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Is there a Musa in ourself that has a hard time to civilize our own self? Right. Okay. Is there a devil in us that calls things by other names? Why do they call the people Africans? They make the people on that continent believe that that's the only people they have and they're all savage. Do we do the same thing? 
Isn't that called yeah. justification? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, what? What you say no, just, it's called? Ju justification. Oh, okay. And why do we justify yeah. it? Because yeah. because we put a trading we we put a trading post in the jungle on that continent. There's something there we want, so we justify getting it, right? Why does it no. keep our people apart from its social equality? Uh, aren't we guilty of that sometimes? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Well, the reason why, <laughs> I mm -hmm. was just thinking about when people say justify, they say, well, the reason why I did it. Mm -hmm. oh. uh -huh. and, and the minister you called know, that deceptive know. intelligence, right? Okay. <laughs> or, or or what happened was... Uh, uh, see, oh, okay. yeah, see. <laughs> so, when, so when you look at lost found whistle lesson number one, all I'm saying, all I'm proposing is that those characters that are in those questions are we can look at that past tense, but present tense could we say that all those represent valences that we have? Is there a Musa in me? Is there a Musa on my time track? Is there a, a Columbus on my time track? Is there does that describe something about my character? that I do with respect to myself, do I look for the poor part? You know what I'm saying? Right, yes, sir. Do, do I find certain things and put the wrong time? Because when you look at Columbus, what did Columbus do? Columbus wanted, he wanted the, he wanted the, rich, the riches of Islam, but he didn't want to go through the Muslims to get there. So Columbus hmm. wanted to go west to go east, to get the riches without going through the fire of Islam. Well, sometimes don't we want certain things without going through the discipline of getting it? Yes, sir. Yeah. And then we try to find a way to circumvent the discipline and then we get lost. Yes, sir. Okay. So what I'm saying is to me, these mm. lessons describe things that we do in present time. Mm. Then what happens, you get to a point where after the, uh, why does, um, uh, why does the devil keep our people apart from the social equality, which I think is number, is that number eight? That's number eight, yes, sir. Okay, number nine says, well, why does Muhammad make the devil study 35 to 50 years before he can call himself a Muslim son, right? Yes, sir. Now, here's a question I had in my mind. If I'm wrong, correct me. I don't remember anything in the history of the prophet where people had to study before they can come amongst them and do trade. Hmm. Again, I could be wrong. So what Muhammad are we talking about? That would make the Arab study 35 to 50 years before they can come amongst us. Okay. Then the next question is, you know, uh, why does Muhammad and a Muslim murder the devil? So now we're in a phase of lessons where we are getting rid of all of those valences that are presented in the first part of the lessons. Mm. Why you got to make your word bond? What is the meaning of FOI? What is the meaning of captain and lieutenant? And then the final question is what? What is the meaning of MGT and GCC? Right. Why is that question number 14? Why is it that Osiris was cut up into 14 pieces and it was ISIS who had to put Osiris back together again? Why 14 pieces? Why 14 questions? Just something to think about. Lesson number one to me is a self-study. Wow, praise be to Allah. And that 14, when you mentioned that 14, um, the minister says that the um the woman has to be civilized, uh, really, uh I can't remember if he said first, but it has to be civilized because she teaches the children. So Mm -hmm. that's why 75% of the work of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is with the woman. And when you look at the Metuneta, it was Isis who put Osiris back together again. Now, Metuneta? That Metuneta, was the Metuneta is the, is the book of, of, of spirituality for the ancient, they call them Egyptians, but we call them the ancient, our, our ancient Kemetic the ancient Kemetic people whom Mother Taneta Muhammad said we are the direct descendants of. Right. Okay. Because when you study the history, the history tells us that when, when the Europeans came and invaded Kemet slash Egypt, they began to destroy everything 
and the the hierophants or the high priests, those that had the knowledge, because at that time the knowledge had to be memorized, they fled to the West in what is now known as the areas of Mauritania and Mali. And then there's there's belief that the Dogon are the descendants of the ancient Kemetic people, the ancient Egyptians, which is our ancestors. So now they go, they flee west. And during slavery, this group of people that was not indigenous to West Africa were the ones that they believe were sold into slavery. So on one level, you can say those that were, some of those that were led into slavery were the descendants of the Dogon and the ancient Egyptians, which would imply that those of us that are here presently have a direct connection to the Dogon genetically and the ancient Egyptians or the ancient Kemetic people. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. I'm I'm kind of stuck on um the putting the, the thing back together. Was that a woman that put it back together? Is that what yeah, you oh yeah, yeah. Os Osiris Osiris represents the 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 like the the male figure in the in the Kemetic tradition. Mm -hmm. Isis is his wife. Mm -hmm. He was he was tricked by Set. Set here, we're talking about the reactive mind on one level. Okay. But in the ancient Kemetic tradition, they put their wisdom in the form of pictures. And then you have to figure out what the pictures are saying. So in, in, in modern translation, we'll say the black this black man was tricked. And his wife had to have a certain level of intelligence in order to put him back together again. So mm -hmm. obviously, if she had to put him back together again, she had to have a wisdom that was greater than his reactive mind. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. I, I just heard the minister talking about that on Final Call Radio to that, what you just said, talking about something to that effect. Yes. Oh, praise is due to Allah. Uh, Sister Denise. Oh, you're on mute, Sister Denise. There you go. Sir, I was, you know, when you asked that question, why we need needed to stay connected to the minister, uh, you know, even when he leaves. And I, I I was thinking about what the messenger told us. When you see him, look at him. Wherever he say, go, go. Wherever he say, stay from, stay from. Mm -hmm. And he get you to the other side. And I was thinking that's an extension of, of connection to the minister. Mm -hmm. The, of staying connected to him mm -hmm. because I mean he, he I don't know we got this far with with him mm -hmm. you know travel with the wise man and so uh you know we you know we can't act like we know where we're going no we don't <laughs> um, we'll um, be... sister, I'm sorry sister Denise yes. the word is actually contact um the word is actually contact, Brother Lukeman, right? Well, what, what is the contact? What, what is the the minister say? Hey, it's not connected. You saying it's contact? It's contact. Stay Can contact. you read, Brother? Yes, it's contact. Uh huh. Stay. But really, really, uh, really, if you boil it down, it's it's really saying the same thing. Is it okay? Because I'm gonna parse. Um, no, go ahead, parse words. it. Parse it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> connected yes. and contact meaning don't let go of the hand of the minister. I, oh, <laughs> yes, <ma 'am. laughs> well, I, I would I'm... say this I would say this I, I understand what you mean by that, but I think the minister would probably say, don't let go of the hand of Allah, right? Right, exactly, because Allah says uh, in the Holy Quran, says Allah is the firmest handle. Right. Those right. that might have issues, and I and I know this is not your intent. I know this is not how you you meet you meant this, but those that stay connected to the minister right. on another on, on in in a wrong way, when the minister departs, 
their mind might depart also. Does that make sense? Yes, but sir. I know, that's why I, 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 know I know that's not how you intended that to be. I suggest in that video that mm -hmm. how to prepare when the minister leaves that was on YouTube. Oh, I'm watching because that. People, some people are personality worship, worshipers. Yes. You know, and like when the person is gone, I mean, they, they even flip when Michael Jackson left us, you know. Mm -hmm. So, like, the world had ended because Mike left. So, that that occurs. So, uh, and they, I mean, to hear them say how they were when the messenger was here and they just felt like, where do we go from here? And then um, some, they, some young lady was saying, you know, I just wish I had kept up with the studies, you know, just... Mm -hmm. Kept up with the studies because mm -hmm. that's a that's a whole world when you in the studies because study leads you brother Jabril say to other studies that leads you to other studies. Mm -hmm. I have this book about Princess Diane, mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, her message on peace, and she was talking about guess what, Israel and Palestine. Mm -hmm. I said. I'm just saying things that make you go, hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that everybody's, you know, talking about it. So she talked about it too. So, I mean, we just, and uh, Amanda Port, she did a, a piece, a report on just genocide, period. All over the planet. Just, just, just from from uh the the Tusis and and how they busted all that up just I see why Allah is gonna have to do what he has to do. Mm -hmm. So I, I want you to agree with me now. I want you to agree with me. <laughs> when I when I destroy you, I mean, you know, I'm I'm justifying, you know, sometimes uh that's that's what I'm saying about, you know, stay connected. Uh, that the connection that that we have with the minister guiding us, he will still guide us. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you know, as he's guiding us, not to not to worship him like he said. It was for the guidance. Yes, and study guides with guidance, and oh my God, I can't even begin. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, Thank yes, ma'am. Sister, connect, sister, sister, sister Denise. Yes, ma'am. Um, connection oh. is one of the definitions of contact. There we go. Synonymous. Yes. All right. Oh. Sounds so, good to me. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> Sister Anya and then Sister Sharon, and then we will close it out. Sister Anya, you are up. Assalamu alaikum. Well, they can can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. I couldn't get off mute. <laughs> okay. Um, earlier, when you mentioned about the um, lesson number one, and that you said number one starts off with the cell, and then number 14 um, ends up, it talks about the MGT and GCC, um, what that made me think of is that we start off with self, um, but just like how we go through the eight dynamics, which takes you into um, from self to family to you know just community to on um, um, universal. Um, I saw that there because with the GCC and I mean with the MGT teaching the children. Um, you're teaching the future, mm -hmm. which will build our civilization. And so you end on um, the building of a civilization. So you've gone from self to a whole new civilization. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then the other part was um, when you talked about Osiris and um, the woman there um, having to put him back together, the, the pieces, and, and wasn't he broken into, was it 14 pieces? 14 pieces. Yeah. 
I, I thought so. So, and, but having to put him back together, I thought of um, Master Farad Muhammad giving to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad these teachings. And with these teachings, he is putting a whole people who were brought through slavery and broken um, because in slavery they had to break our spirit, break our connection to Allah. And so he is putting all of those pieces um, and we were broken up as a family in, in all, all ways we were broken. But he is bringing us back together as a family, putting the pieces together, mm -hmm. bringing us back into the knowledge that was taken, that we were stripped from and, and reestablishing our connection with him and in study guide 19 i believe um it talks about the um, messenger is styled in scripture as a woman mm -hmm. so here we have um uh question number um, 14 of lesson number one um where it talks about the woman and the building establishing the civilization. And I saw that link with Osiris and the woman that is putting Osiris back together, being styled as um, the, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and of course, the one that represents him in our midst today, the most the Honorable Minister of mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am, if you take a zero, and put that in between the one and the four of the 14, what number do you get? 104 books. Mm -hmm. Praise be to Allah. Is that it, Sis Anya? Yes, sir. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sister Sharon. Yes, sir. We got stuck on this bridge over this water. <laughs> 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 on our way to Juma, inshallah. But thinking about the numbers, the one and the four equals five, and it, that's mm -hmm. the food. Surah five is the food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad reminds us to nurse from the Holy Quran. You know, mm -hmm. feed on the word of Allah. So, you know, just being focused on, on that food and not the physical food and, you know, the relevance of it being to Ramadan, we're told to read, to read our Holy Quran. You know, it's 30, 30 days, it's 30 parts for us to, just to feed on the word of Allah, to, to be reminded. I think Sister Tina was talking about the remind, the reminding, a reminder profits the believer. Mm -hmm. um, and then talking about the woman, the um, number 14, I remember the minister saying that the resurrection of the man is, uh, is going to come through with the woman. So we have to be in a, a certain mind condition. Um, you know, Sister Tina mentioned 75% of the work being with us. The work is on us where we have to be worked on and through us. And it's not, it's not, something that's easy to do but it's easy to do if we follow the instruction so we're the anchor for the man to get back to god the god within himself and the connection to the supreme being mm -hmm. so that was something that was um on my mind if, if it to me it makes sense mm -hmm. so i just wanted to share that well, praise you to a lot thank you sister sharon anyone else before we close it out, thoughts, comments, corrections, cognitions, postulates. Inshallah, we will see each other again tomorrow at 10 a.m. We'll try to see if we can finish out the rest of uh the rest of Ramadan. We're right, we're right there at the door now. So if there's nothing else, you got something, Sister Tina? Oh, no, no, set. No, no, no. Okay. Okay. All right. I do. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. When you said done tomorrow, um, 
Are there any teachers that come on? Um, oh, no, you, you all have MGT day? class tomorrow. So, no, we will we will pick up God willing on Sunday evening at our at our regular time on Sunday Sunday evening at six o'clock. Yes, sir. And and I won't be present. We've been invited to Iftar. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. We'll I'll uh inshallah we will we'll take the recording and put it on YouTube as usual. Yes, sir. All right. So let us go ahead and close out in prayer. <clears throat> Attention prayer. I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds, the beneficent, the most merciful. Master of the day of judgment in which we now live, the alone we serve, thine aid do we seek. Please Allah guide us on the straight path, the path upon whom thou hast bestowed favors not the path upon whom thy wrath is brought down, nor those who go astray after hearing thy teachings. Amen. Amen. All right, family. Let me let me do this first before we uh